All right. I took place in the Magic the Gathering pre-release. For those of you who don't know, Magic Gathering is a card game. And pre-release is a format in which you do a sealed draft, which means you open six booster packs and build a deck from there. Now, what's special about pre-release is that it's normally about a set that hasn't come out yet. It actually comes out the week after. So I got to sample uh, Hour of Devastation, the newest set released for Magic the Gathering. And I had a lot of fun. Okay, so this here is the pre-release box. This is what you get when you sign up for a pre-release uh, specifically for Hour of Devastation. It comes with this this cool cover, and it, you get this you get this nice little deck box. This thing is cool. I never found out what uh, what this which cartouche this is. If this is one specific, or if it's all of them, I was thinking that in the middle of the in the middle of the draft. This is what it looks like on the inside. Oh boy! And it comes with like a little holder. It's got sections. It's got everything divided up. And inside here are booster packs. Uh, I open them up, use it to play, so I kind of open it. But this is pretty dope. Like out of all the, uh, out of all the cases, the boxes they give you that they have given us so far, they have a specific theme to them or a specific design. I think this was the coolest because this can hold your deck once you build it. It holds. Um, it should hold a uh, one sleeve deck uh, for a, a draft, so forty cards, and then it it it, it can easily sit upright. Or bring it back down with the cards in it and lock in place. It's really cool, really clever. And then in here they give you a D20, which is a 20-sided die. And let me bring it over here. A 20-sided die used to keep track of your life. This one is red as opposed to the blue one from um, Amonkhet, the set before. I like this one. I, I, I don't like the blue one. Uh, I, red's my color. So this one, perfect. This one is going in my... And my uh, dice cage, cage die. Okay, so for the pre-release, I played Black Red. I said, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to go to war. We're going to do it all up. Uh, there were four games. There's four games. Let's talk about each of the four. So for the first game, I actually had to write it out because there was a lot going on in the middle of the night. Okay, so for the first game, I played against Blue Red Sphinxes. Uh, my opponent, uh, she had every single sphinx that ever sphinxed like a sphinx would. The main cards that I use to take down blue red sphinxes is Electrify. Uh, Electrify deals four damage to target creature. Just completely took him out. He had to go. He had to go. Bye, Sphinx. Torment of Scarabs. Uh, it's an enchantment. It's an aura. It's a curse. And at the beginning of Enchanted Player's Upkeep, that player loses three life unless he or she sacrifices a non land permanent or discards a card. Sphinx is from the hand. Gone. Sphinx is from the field. Gone. <sighs> On Crop Crasher, uh, it has haste, and I may exert it when it attacks. If I do, target creature can't block this turn. So I, I removed a blocker, a potential blocker from play. And when getting rid of one blocker wasn't enough, I had Torment of Venom. Put three minus one minus one counters on target creature. Its control loses three life unless he or she sacrifices another non-land permanent or discards a card. Ooh, that deck did work that, that, that game. That was fun. That was a really fun game. Uh, what happened there? She told me that she was pretty new to draft. This was actually her third weekend ever of drafting. And I said, okay, cool, because I haven't played I haven't played since Shadow of Innistrad, so I'm kind of rusty. Uh, I think I might need help with the deck building. But we both talked about our decks. We helped each other look at what, what was wrong, what could have been better. And we both had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Okay, round two. I went up against red, black, black, red. It was a mirror match. So I was black, red. He was black, red. Uh, the, the unspeakable happened. The unspeakable happened. He showed up. The scorpion god. Uh, this thing pretty much eats, it eats other creatures for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then it's really hard to get rid of because it has a clause that says whenever this creature dies, uh, it return it to your hand so you can cast it again. It's actually really hard to get rid of. As soon as this card came out, honestly, I said to myself, I kind of don't want to play this anymore. <laughs> but I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. I said, yo, let's, let's ride this out. We don't know what all are in the set, but we know what's in our deck. Is there a way... We can get rid of this god for good. I don't want to get rid of him once and he comes back. I want to get rid of him for good. What can we do? Puncturing Blow. I had top deck Puncturing Blow right then and there. Uh, Puncturing Blow deals five damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So I read the card very slowly. And here's literally what my face did. I draw the card. Ooh. 
So I dropped puncturing blow. I pretty much miracled it from my head. <laughs> I dropped puncturing blow and I killed the god in one shot. I said, yo, maybe we can win this. Maybe we can win this. What else did I use? I also had on crop crasher. Once again, haste. Uh, you may exert him as he attacks. If you do, a uh, target creature can't block. Made for made for clear runs, clear runs. And then what happened next? What happened next? I lived the dream, ladies and gentlemen. In my in my pool, I have insult to injury. Insult says damage you can't be prevented this turn. If a source you control would deal damage this turn, it deals double that damage instead. And then the injury side says injury deals two damage to target creature and two damage to target player. So if I can do both of them in one move, in one turn, then I'm probably going to take something out and I'm going to take a huge chunk of life from my opponent. Only thing, together it costs six mana. How am I going to make make six mana work? I'm only going to make it work if I can cast half of that card for free. And I did that with Wildfire Eternal. I lived the dream, ladies and gentlemen. It has a flick four and whenever it attack, oh, a flick four means uh, if it's blocked, defending player loses for life. A flick, uh, and it also has whenever... Wildfire Eternal attacks and isn't blocked. You can cast an instant or sorcery from your hand without paying its mana cost. So I was able to attack with Wildfire Eternal. It didn't get blocked. I cast Insult for free. Uh, we dealt, I think, like a total of 12 before I used Injury for the win. I used Injury in another card for the win. It was beautiful. I lived the dream. I, I was happy. I was ready to cry at that moment. And then the second game, I switched over to White blue that was i just went to war went to war removed stuff tapped stuff down uh made it so stuff couldn't block it was went to war we went to war ladies and gentlemen third game i focused on red black against an eternalized deck eternalized is a mechanic that says if this creature's in your graveyard exile it, and then you can get a copy that's much bigger much better he's ready to ready to go to war against people going to war with you uh that that time I used once again on crop crasher as well as a lot of combat tricks and a lot of discard to make it so that my opponent couldn't play anything as well as the board was clear. Uh it was it was fun. Focused on Ruthless Sniper, who says whenever you cycle or discard a card, and you may pay one if you do put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. That way I can clear the board up a little bit more than than I was doing before. Um and I also had a lot of cards that activated that ability or triggered that ability with discard effects like the miasmic mummy whenever it enters the battlefield uh, each player discards a card so i was able to throw away a card i didn't need mostly lands um pay the one put a minus one minus one counter on an opposing creature either kill it or make it small enough to where it can block but it'll die and it won't kill my creatures and then the third the fourth game i lost fourth game i got blown out it was black, red against blue, green. Why do I always lose the blue, green? I'm tired of losing the blue, green. Uh, bottom line, uh, I tried using the the same tactics, but I had the early game. At the early game on lock, but they had much bigger creatures. Blue, green is known for having bigger creatures as well as stronger effects. So I couldn't do too much about it. I couldn't. I couldn't take out my opponent's stuff as easily as I did there. Okay, so I won three games. And I lost one. That means I get four packs. And I'm actually about to open them all right now. I would open them last night, but I was exhausted because I didn't get in until five of the morning. Let's open these packs, boy. What's in here? What we got? What we got? We got camels. Got another desert. I like deserts without weakness. Farm to market. Destroy target attacking or blocking creature. Draw two cards. Discard two cards. Another torment of scarabs. We got the hour of glory. Exile a target creature. If that creature was a god, its controller reveals his or her hand and exiles all cards from it with the same name as that creature. Dope. Dope. Okay, what's in this one? What's in this one? Okay, Survivor's Encampment. Tap this and untap creature you control to add one color of any, uh, one man of any color. Add one color of any mana. A lot of combat tricks in here. Okay, we got Gideon's Defeat. Also, I got Gideon's Defeat. Uh, Jace's Defeat. In Chandra's defeat already. Oh, here's Jace's defeat. Overcome. Oh, Catcher's Last Mercy. Dope. Uh, your life total becomes equal to your starting life total. Lands you control. Don't untap during your next up tap step. Commander. Let's go right to Commander. Pack number three. What we got in here? Pack number three. 
Another puncturing blow. Harrier Naga. Wretched Camel. Love me some camels. What else we got? Crook of Condemnation. Merciless Eternal. Got the Scorpion God. That's my favorite one. Oh, dope. That's perfect, too, because you know how much I love Black Red. I finally. That's my first Black Red Commander, isn't it? Yo. That's my. Wow. And then a Foil Forest. Foil Full Art Forest did that. That's going right in the lands binder. Dope. And last one. Last one. What we got here? What we doing? What we doing? What we doing? What we doing? Another Torment of Venom. All right. Manolith. Hey, that's actually pretty cool art. I like how this one looks compared to the, the standard Manolith. The Catcher's Avenger. Crash Through. Torment of Scarabs. And the Hour of Revelation. Dope. Uh... It costs three less if there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield. Already costs six. Not destroy all non-land permanents. I'm here for it. All right, dope. All in all, I had a fun time with the pre-release. I always have fun at pre-release. I got to meet a lot of people. Like, everyone I played said they haven't pl- haven't uh done a draft. They either haven't done a draft before. Or they haven't drafted since Shadows of Innistrad. I thought that was weird uh, because that was the last time I drafted as well. All right, guys, it's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, my take on pre-release. I had a lot of fun. I'll see you guys later. Happy birthday to me.